6. The Week of Intensive Training The next week was devoted to a program of intensive training. Each day the six new apostles were put in the hands of their respective nominators for a thoroughgoing review of all they had learned and experienced in preparation for the work of the kingdom. The older apostles carefully reviewed, for the benefit of the younger six, Jesus' teachings up to that hour. Evenings they all assembled in Zebedee's garden to receive Jesus' instruction. It was at this time that Jesus established the midweek holiday for rest and recreation, and they pursued this plan of relaxation for one day each week throughout the remainder of his material life. As a general rule, they never prosecuted their regular activities on Wednesday. On this weekly holiday, Jesus would usually take himself away from them, saying, My children, go for a day of play. Rest yourselves from the arduous labors of the kingdom, and enjoy the refreshment that comes from reverting to your former vocations or from discovering new sorts of recreational activity. While Jesus, at this period of his earth life, did not actually require this day of rest, he conformed to this plan because he knew it was best for his human associates. Jesus was the teacher, the master. His associates were his pupils, disciples. Jesus endeavored to make clear to his apostles the difference between his teachings and his life among them, and the teachings which might subsequently spring up about him. Said Jesus, My kingdom and the gospel related thereto shall be the burden of your message. Be not sidetracked into preaching about me and about my teachings. Proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and portray my revelation of the Father in heaven, but do not be misled into the bypaths of creating legends and building up a cult having to do with beliefs and teachings about my beliefs and teachings. But again they did not understand why he thus spoke, and no man dared to ask why he so taught them. In these early teachings, Jesus sought to avoid controversies with his apostles as far as possible, accepting those involving wrong concepts of his Father in heaven. In all such matters, he never hesitated to correct erroneous beliefs. There was just one motive in Jesus' post-baptismal life on Urantia, and that was a better and truer revelation of his paradise father. He was the pioneer of the new and better way to God, the way of faith and love. Ever his exhortation to the apostles was, Go seek for the sinners, find the downhearted, and comfort the anxious. Jesus had a perfect grasp of the situation. He possessed unlimited power, which might have been utilized in the furtherance of his mission. But he was wholly content with means and personalities which most people would have regarded as inadequate and would have looked upon as insignificant. He was engaged in a mission of enormous dramatic possibilities, but he insisted on going about his father's business in the most quiet and undramatic manner. He studiously avoided all display of power and he now planned to work quietly at least for several months with his twelve apostles around about the Sea of Galilee.